Thank you for all being here. Um, my name is Shine Basu. I'm the director of the Office of National Scholarships. This is the place for student engagement. It's, um, it's a great pleasure to have all of you here, President Castor, Ian Adams. Um, great turnout amongst the students, and this is really for you guys. Um, I should be brief. Um, today we have a distinguished panel um, representing all the facets of Fulbright, from study grants to the English teaching assistantship. And at USF, we have a wonderful record on Fulbright, both on the faculty side, you're doing the work of the great Norlin de Marie, who is somewhere here. Ah, oh, there. <laughs> Please stand and be recognized. And on the student side, we were leaders in Florida last year. Um, but I want to move beyond this uh, competitive statement. Um, probably the best summary of the Fulbright program is that Senator Fulbright saw it as an alternative to war because it is usually very hard to have animosity towards people if you have actually got to know them. So that briefly encapsulates the spirit. I sh um, should recognize my own office, uh, Fulbright Program Advisor on the student side, Ms. Lauren Chambers. <laughs> we are awaiting today's event. Um, Ms. Lauren Larchie is still outside, I think. <laughs> She's our assistant director. She's a former Fulbrighter herself um, to Germany. She was an ETA. And Miss Lauren Roberts. We should all be blessed with such problems. I have three Laurens in my office. <laughs> and it's very confusing, <laughs> to say the least. But they're all wonderful Laurens, um, as are the rest of the Laurens in the world. <laughs> so um, that said, I'm going to hand this over to Miss Chambers to introduce our panel and get started. Good afternoon, how is everyone? Good, 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 good. good. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, excellent. Um, as Dr. Basu said, my name is Lauren Chambers. I'm the Associate Director of the Office of National Scholarships and also the Fulbright Program Advisor for the U.S. Student Program. So if you decide to apply for a Fulbright um, and you're a student, you would be working with me on your application. Um, so I'd like to go ahead and introduce our panelists today um, who are going to answer and talk through a variety of different questions. There will be time at the end for the audience to ask questions as well, so please be thinking of what you'd like to ask them based off of how they've answered too. Um, so to get things started off and start the introductions, I'd like to introduce Heather Tyson Gandara, who is from the Institute of International Education, um, which is the governing body of the Fulbright program. Um, and so Heather has over 19 years of collective experience in the field of international education. She joined IIE 12 years ago from Rice University. Uh, for the past two years, she's led the Fulbright Student Program Outreach and Recruitment Team. Um, our next panelist is Allison Hoffman, who applied for a Fulbright teaching assistantship to Norway this past application cycle, and she's currently an alternate, so she's waiting to hear about that status. Um, she is going to be graduating next month from USF with her MFA in Creative Writing Fiction and a Certificate in Professional and Technical Communication. Um, as a writer and teacher, she believes revision is the most powerful tool in creating polished pieces. Therefore, she spent her Fulbright application cycle writing many, many, many drafts of her essays, which is something that she'll probably talk about. Um, we also have um, Dr. Holly Donahue Singh, who is a full-time instructor here at USF and in the Honors College, and she received a Fulbright study, or excuse me, Fulbright Research Grant to India 2000-2001, um, so that she could, her project was about how people remember, memorialize, and learn about local past through media, visits to historical museums, and family stories. Um, we next have Elizabeth Brown, who uh, went to Germany on a Fulbright study grant. She's currently a PhD candidate in the College of Marine Science with a focus in marine micropaleontology. Um, and she is hoping to finish up her PhD soon. Fingers crossed, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and last but not least is Arushad Aru Tassini, who went to Spain um, on a Fulbright study grant to receive a master's degree from the Institut de Empresa in Madrid, and she's currently working for PricewaterhouseCoopers here in Tampa. 
Vanessa. Um, thank you so much for having me here. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with all of you students and faculty and staff at USF. Um, thank you for deciding to celebrate Fulbright during your USF week. I know it's an important week and to be able to distinguish Fulbright as it is, is, is an honor for me to be here. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, just sort of an overview and introduction of the program. The Fulbright U.S. Student Program was created by the United States Congress in 1946 and was aptly named after J. William Fulbright, Senator of Arkansas, with the goal of increasing mutual understanding between people of the U.S. and other countries. The program is sponsored by the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs and administered by IIE as well as U.S. embassies and other binational uh, representatives throughout the world. The Fulbright Scholarship Programs welcome applicants from all educational backgrounds and pursuits, including the arts, which is something that is often misunderstood about the Fulbright Program. As a research institution, I have been delighted to meet so many artists on campus today. So definitely consider, no matter your educational background or record, applying for the U.S. to Fulbright program. There are two types of grants for U.S. citizens, teaching assistantships and research or study grants. And they're offered in over 140 countries per year. To be more specific, there's 950 warrants in 140 countries for research, and the duration for research, or, or as we call it, English Teaching Assistantship, or ETA, is eight to 10 months. So it's an opportunity to immerse oneself in another culture, to contribute to that culture through research and teaching. And ETA actually offers, in 75 countries, over 1,200 awards a year. So. To be eligible, I'll just briefly take you on these eligibility points. You need to be a U.S. citizen at the application deadline, bachelor's degree at the start of the program, so that would be one year following the application deadline is actually the timeline for starting the program, and no doctorate at the time of the application, and follow country-specific requirements. Fulbright is a robust and complex program and so there are 140 different countries with different requirements and so we want to start out by letting you know it is complex but it's doable and we're looking for a wide variety of applicants who should consider the program some of the benefits are far-reaching and they're very comprehensive and include in some cases tuition, travel coverage, monthly stipend, um, health insurance, and dependent on the grant may include dependent support, tuition, language lessons, disability-related accommodations, which is a population we very much seek to reach with the program. And the factors in the selection, I'll talk a little bit about that to give you some pointers on what we look for as the students are selected, so that it should be on the forefront of your mind as you fill out your application. Quality and feasibility of the application. Advancing the Fulbright goals, including cultural exchange in addition to research and your teaching experience. And desirability of achieving diversity. So I want to encourage you all to consider the Fulbright program this year or in the future. We often have students who receive the award who have applied two to three times. So please keep up your spirits and decide to apply in a subsequent year if you are selected the first year. The application is open and we will accept applications through October 9, 2018. My best advice is to apply early. The application is, as I mentioned, very comprehensive, thorough, and requires thought and foresight and months of preparation. We often say it takes a village to raise a Fulbrighter. <laughs> <laughs> Depend on IIE, my organization, as there are world area experts who are here to answer your questions and get you through that application. Um, depend on the Lawrence and all of the other staff and helpful resources at the Honors College. And 
Um, you will create your colleagues at USF as well, um, but you will create a competitive application and be considered, I'm, I'm sure of it. This institution has a great history with the Fulbright program. Remember that the U.S. Student Program supports recent graduates, graduates, and early career professionals to have an immersive overseas experience that not only gives the opportunity to conduct research, teach, or academic pursuits, but also to engage in the transformative culture exchange that will benefit all involved. Post-award, we will become part of the extensive alumni network, which is essentially a global marketplace that sets you up with infinite opportunity. So please, Tell your unique story through your application and consider the Fulbright Network for your future. Senator Fulbright correctly predicted a surplus in funding following World War II. And so the Fulbright Scholarship was born in 1946. Over 70 years later, this historic program continues to impact the lives of students all over the world. Please join us, and again, a special thanks to the Honors College for having me here. If I'm doing this correctly, go both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So I'd like to go ahead and open the first question up to the recipients and ask what made you apply for the Fulbright U.S. Student Program? And anybody can jump in or I can pick someone to start. <laughs> someone jumped in right there. I can jump in. <laughs> so, this is actually my second time applying for an English teaching assistantship. I first applied one at, uh, for one after getting my bachelor's degree, and now I'm getting my master's degree. And the reason that I wanted to um, get the ETA was because I wanted to grow as an instructor. I've known for a really long time how much I love teaching, and I chose Norway um, in part, or Norway came across my list uh, because it doesn't require a foreign language proficiency. I'm fluent in Latin, which no one speaks anymore. <laughs> So that was a big factor in my application process. Okay. Um, so I applied for the Fulbright, I guess partly out of just a spirit of adventure that I wanted the chance to be able to go abroad and spend a good amount of time abroad. Um, I went to India on my Fulbright, and I actually went there for the first time as a semester abroad student, as an undergraduate. Um, and that first experience was my first experience abroad. Um, when I went to India for my study abroad experience in my junior year as an undergrad, it was my first experience of air travel. <laughs> and so I wanted my second with the Fulbright experience. <laughs>